Hello, this is High Templar with my new Total War Warhammer DLC analysis video. And we just received the new spotlight video for Grombridal the Legendary Lord. And there is quite some controversy around it and around Grombridal in general. I've seen some comments saying, for example, that Creative Assembly wants to milk us for some money, basically make us buy magazine and in that way we will have to buy the Legendary Lord, which is not completely true. Also, the White Wolf magazine is not owned by the Creative Assembly, but the Games Workshop, who hold the license for Warhammer. So it's more like cross-company marketing rather than anything else. Creative Assembly will actually not get any money from it. So either way, let's... Is, and so some other people say that Grombridal is the most overpowered thing ever. Let's just see that video, review what's going on there, and uh, I will tell you what I think about it. Sega. Hello everybody, and welcome to our Grom Brindle the White Dwarf Spotlight video for Total War Warhammer. Now Grom Brindle is a brand new legendary lord for the dwarves, and we're going to be going through some of his traits and skills and quest battles throughout this video. But first... So firstly we got this screen, so we do know he's starting with the normal dwarves, but we knew that already. And we all already knew those uh, lore defects and everything that is written here. We've already seen all of that. I talked about it in my previous video when I I'm making analysis of Grombrindal's skills. And yeah, this is underway, large, large underway evasion, large reinforcement rate, and the power of ancestor gods, which we will learn what it is in right in few moments actually. First off, we're gonna check out the beginning of his campaign. Hail to you, Grombrindle, ancestor of legend. You have secured Karazakarak, defended it from the green-skin fiends, and put their gutless horde to rout. Yet more remains undone. The bloody spears still infest the mountains to the east, setting up their hovels amidst your sacred pillars. Dwarfen lands lay sullied by their sickening taint. You must be the hero of the ancient sagas and march for their deliverance. To the south, yet more vicious Urki and Groby lay ready to strike at your kin. Perhaps even a loathsome black goblin. Know that there are other dwarfen lords who would gladly ally with one so legendary as you for common cause. Yeah, that is true that the White Dwarf is uh, the most legendary. This is actually one of the few cases I would say that Creative Assembly got it right and this is legendary lords. Maybe like four of those guys are actually legendary. And White Dwarf is somebody who is appearing in the midst of a battle for thousands of years helping the dwarves so yeah very much so legendary you don't get much more legendary than this guy the dwarves will know a new age of prosperity heralded by the battle cry of Grombrindle, the white dwarf So, as per usual, Grombrindle starts at Karaze Karak. Now, let's take a quick look at his skill tree. The dwarfs need me! So, Grombrindle actually comes complete with four quest chains, and I thought. I take a quick look. Now, uh, let's just uh, review his stats first. So, he has uh, 5300 health, which is, you know, more than Ungrim, less than Thorgrim. Uh, 120 armor, which is pretty normal, 85 leadership, which is very good, but you know, nothing special, 32 speed, which is normal, 70 attack and 40 melee defense, which is 5 more defense than the Urgrim, and at the same time, this guy has a magical attack, 500 weapon strength and 45 charge bonus, so we will have to compare this guy to Urgrim with having 5 charge bonus less, but 70 more uh, damage, mostly armor piercing, 
and uh, five more melee defense and also few hundred more health but not being unbreakable and this is very important o although we have seen that this guy has a uh, ability called Grombrindal has no fear which also might you know do something so let's just uh, Let's just see the video and tell the guys, uh, see the guy and hear him talking about those skills that I have already actually reviewed in my previous video about the Grombrindal. At some of his speeches during these battles. First up is the... Yes, but firstly let's look at, at those um, items which I actually already also discussed and this is... This is pretty bad armor because, for example, Torgrim has one that has that is giving me him 15% ward save, and the the Ungrim has uh, a cloak, I believe, or something like that, that gives him ward save of 20%. This is only plus eight armor, plus 10 physical resistance. This is pretty much the worst item of all the dwarf lords when it comes to the armor. Quest for the armor of Glimmeral Scales versus Chaos. What it? Dear slime worshipping Ungi filth merchant, get your ass on that pit reptile over <laughs> And here. then we have uh, the quest for the rune axe of Grom Brindle, which as. Yeah, we can see that it is pretty powerful, but this is actually not more powerful than the axe of Grumni, who Torgrim has, and well, it is, it is because of this ability. That is Augment that is working for 20, 52 seconds, but you can use it once in uh, 2 minutes and 15 seconds. And it's actually giving charge bonus and speed while at the same time decreasing leadership by 16. And decrease, the decreasing le leadership by 16 is actually huge because it will add up to another ability of Grombrindal. So it is very powerful indeed. However, you have to remember that Torgrim has another item, a book giving plus eight melee attack to all the dwarf, all the Davi units in the area of 45 meters. So this is also very, very powerful. This one is also very nice. If you micromanage this guy, that is pretty devastating. I will talk about that in a few seconds. As you can see, is a really powerful axe that will reduce the upkeep of your army and gives you an augment during battles. So the upkeep for the army and augment. Uh, so the upkeep for the army is pretty much the same as the weapon for the Torgrim. Nothing special about that, and slightly more, slightly more hitting power. But Torgrim one has bonus versus large of four, so that is also quite big. Then we have the quest for the Cloak of Alea, which will heavily reduce vampiric and chaos corruption in the local region. Well, I see you, scum, and by Valea's cloak, I'll have every last rotten one of you back in that ground, pushing up your tombstones! So with a total of uh, the Cloak of Alea, 15% magic resistance with the previous with the armor of 10% uh, physical resistance, it is add up to about, you know, 10% ward save because you usually don't attack with magic, but still. It is, if you collect all of them, it's like, it's still not as good as the other world le le leaders, but the Grombrindal has more hitting power and more health, although it's not unbreakable as I've mentioned before. I think that one's actually probably the hardest quest battle I've ever played. Next up we have the quest for the Rune Helm of so, Zuthbar. let us record great deeds this day and give these earthly scum a right royal hammering! Grum so yeah, this one giving plus 16 uh, leadership is actually quite nice. Brindle is quickly becoming one of my favorite lords for how he likes to talk smack at the beginning of his battles. Not a quest battle, but a unique skill, we have the Time of the Ancestors. Available at rank 10, this will reduce the time between each passing of the Living Ancestor event, which we'll get to in a moment. Scrolling on, we can see some different additions to his skill tree. For instance, we have Flash Bomb at the end of the battle effects. Now, this is very important, because this is at the end of the 
tree that is actually boosting his army skills, not his personal skills, and this flash bomb is insane. It is available but at a low level, but theoretically, but you have to put a lot of you you do have to put a lot of skills in, in, in this red tree basically. But it uh, does decrease leadership of your enemies by another 8, which is to the total of 24. That is quite a big leadership um, damage that he is doing. And at the same time, melee defense and speed. So those guys are not running away and will die very quickly if they are in, a, in, in the area of effect of the slash bomb. Very, very useful. However, duration only 27 seconds and 135 mm, 135 cooldown so very powerful if used at the right mom moment of, of the battle now flash bomb is a very cool hex that basically covers the enemy in smoke lowering their melee defense leadership and speed allowing you to cut them down really quick however it's quite interesting it's got a fairly long cooldown time it can only cool down if grom Bindle is engaged in melee also, because it's at the end of the battle effects chain, it'll take you roughly around 10 skill points just to get it. Now down toward the campaign effects, this is where Grom Brindle really shines. He has Ancient Acumen. So I've mentioned those already before. Ancient Acumen giving plus 3 uh, recruitment uh, experience and this Eager King giving plus 15 land units uh, movement but this is working faction wise and do i do remind you that if you pick any other legendary lord and you can pick grombrindal later on in your campaign he will get the same boost to all your armies which gives plus three unit experience for all new recruits eager kin which gives minus 15 percent for land units absolutely relentless which gives plus 15 percent campaign movement range Get Up, which gives a 6% increase to casualty replenishment rate. The White Dwarf's Call, which gives you an extra recruitment slot. And Lightning Strike, which of course lets you ignore enemy reinforcements. It's worth. So, yeah, these are very, very powerful skills, and as I've mentioned before, if you recruit Grombrindal as your second or third lore, uh, lord, you will still be able to basically pick them up. And this guy will still be a total beast in the combat with those stats, while at the same time be able to boost all your armies all over the map. So very, very powerful. You don't have to pick this particular guy to have those bonuses. Noting that while these are very powerful skills, you'll be spending all of your skill points in it to get all of these benefits. And on top of that, you have to spend another 10 to just get the flash bomb. So, so you'll be heavily ignoring most of the skills that Grumbrindle has if you're trying to get all of his campaign traits. Now, mind you, not only he had, uh, not only he had a special skill that is giving additional uh, reinforcement range, but he also had his personal skill giving 30% reinforcement range. So he can reinforce from a very far away. Very nice. And this is another thing that I wanted to talk about. We didn't know how the Living Ancestor works, and now we can. So let's just look at it. At some point, this is working for 25 turns, so we might expect it. And the Living Ancestor event, you can decrease the time between them by 10 turns by his special skill. Because this boost lasts for 25 turns, it is possible, there are two possibilities. Either the event is happening every 25 turns or every 35 turns and decreasing by 10 will either make it this boost permanent, basically you pick one and then it's, you can pick another or will decrease the time between boosts by 10 turns, making them basically, you will have more flexibility of picking one boost over the other like having Grumni strength for 15 turns because you really really need to destroy people and this is only for the Grumbrindal Falls plus 10 melee defense plus 10 melee attack but still you really really need to kill somebody and then maybe go some research or something next we have Grumbrindal's unique living ancestor event yeah so this Valaya will decrease uh, 
decrease winds of magic when the ground brindle is also increase casualty replenishment rate by insane amount plus 20 percent that's quite insane public order plus 10 percent and vampiric reduction and chaos reduction a massive immense reduction every few turns or so you'll receive a dilemma that will give you positive effects on the campaign but you'll have to choose which of these you want in order to best suit the current and the grombrindal's fury is giving plus 10 uh, melee attack for grombrindal plus 15 melee defense and plus 30 weapon strength Unfortunately, from what I see on this image, this is non-armor piercing weapon strength only, which will be not as powerful with this guy basically. But still, I'm not sure why would anyone pick this one if you could get King of Grimnir. Situation you're in. These range from battle effects such as Grimnir's strength giving you melee bonuses, Valier's protection which gives you kind of. And here, the most important one, upkeep. 20% for all unit in Grombrindar Force, research rate plus 20% and this is huge, construction, call, uh, construction cost minus 10% and recruitment cost. This is not that important as the upkeep and research rate which are huge. Of like campaign reductions in uh, corruption, the White Dwarf which will give you direct effects to Grombrindal himself and the Apprentice of Grungi which will vastly improve the speed of your technology and improve your economy faction wide. I was recently playing a fun siege multiplayer battle with CA Dogbert where he was playing a scar snake under the greenskins and I defending a Karak as Grom Brindle under the dwarfs. This battle was extremely close and down to the wire, mainly because of mistakes on both of our parts but also because of Grom Brindle's amazing flash bomb ability, turning the tide at the last second. Toward the end of the battle here we have Grom Brindle right in the thick of it against a regiment of renowned unit of Crimson Killers. Now these guys are black orcs, they're very powerful and, and Grom Brindle is going toe to toe with them. Now he is about to die, he's very low on health and this was right toward the end of the battle where we were very 50-50 in the, in the battle odds. But I had to get him in combat because I needed his flash bomb ability to cool down. It only cools down if he's engaged in melee. Yeah, so this ability only uh, works in melee and he is already providing minus 16 boost for the, I mean, nerf for the morale, damage for the morale of, of the enemy that he's fighting. As you can see his hit points are tumbling down to 400, but we just about got it in time, just as Grumbrindle was about to break. And then the mass rout began to happen on Dogbert's side. The minus 8 leadership combined with the minus 76% speed and the minus 34 melee defense all combined together to just have the rest of his army rout. Now Skarsnik is actually still over in a corner fighting, which is why the odds are remaining the same, but essentially Dogbert... This is what I was talking about. So Grombrinol has no fear, this is... Once in a battle you can use it uh, every two mi I mean, the cooldown is like 2 minutes and 15 seconds, so you have to wait this long to be able to use it. But basically... It seems like every unit on the battlefield for will be unbreakable for 33 seconds. Wow. That is that is actually huge. I just lost control of all of his remaining units and eventually I was able to get the victory once Skarsnik was killed. So I thought it was actually a great example of how Grombrindle can actually be used in combat. And he amassed himself over 180 kills. Most of them <laughs> were actually black orcs. So he's definitely not one to trifle with. Anyway guys, that's it for this Grom Brindle Spotlight video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to get Grom Brindle for yourself, click the more info button on screen now or check the description to find out how you can get it in your particular region. For more information and videos on Total War, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow us on social media. So yeah, basically what he's telling about the re uh, how to get the Grombrindal, it's working like that. Firstly, I've mentioned that before, but people still ask, so I'm uh, so I'm answering that again very quickly. You need to either buy the White Wolf magazine, which is not available in every country like mine, for example. So you can order it and ship it, but it costs a lot. But you can also go to any games workshop. Uh, shop and uh, basically the staff, 
since the 28th, so there is like a few days more, the staff will give you a free a free Steam key, basically. So you will be able to get the Grombrindal this way. And if there is no game workshop shops in your country, like uh, for example in mine, well, that is pretty much a problem because, well, I would assume people would sell some of those on the eBay or whatever, because Otherwise, you have to wait for like 2017 to buy it, and that will be a bit problematic. Now, going back to the OP, yes, Grombrindal is a very powerful warrior, has very, very fun skills, but if you look at it, what does it really change? He is powerful, yes. He is like something between the Torgrim and Angrim. He is more powerful than Angrim in the battle for sure, but he is more squishy because of Angrim having 20% ward save with all of his weapons. So, and you can pick those. Uh, so, um, that is maybe, so yeah, he's still more powerful, true. But when you are starting the game, you are picking campaign difficulty, and this is just another difficulty pick. I mean, if you want to have Chaos campaign, you can pick Archeon, and then campaign is significantly easier than if you are picking Sigvald. I mean, significantly harder for Sigvald, significantly easier for Archeon. So this will be pretty much the same. This, uh, this Living Ancestor bonus is pretty huge, I do agree with that. It is very nice bonus. And uh, while Torgrim is giving more bonuses for upkeep, for example, and, uh, and he has High King, White Dwarf will be better. Yes, he will be better, definitely he will be better with the Living Ancestors and all these uh, additional abilities he has. That will be that will be very powerful lord. But like I said, in campaign doesn't really matter. Because if you want to play harder campaign, pick another lord and get Grom Grindal as your secondary lord, he will still boost your armies significantly because you can still pick those skills. Not a pro problem here. The only thing you will lack is the living ancestor. On the other hand, in multiplayer, well we will have to see how much this guy costs. We already seen some of those, uh, some screenshots from Creative Assembly showing us the Grand Brindal in a game, but that might change. And so, yeah, we'll have to see basically. And we'll have to see what we can pick for him. If we can pick Axe and the armor, he will be pretty decent. If uh, he will cost like around 2000. And actually, what I think he actually should be costing a lot more, a lot, a lot less. Or the Dwarf Lords should be costing a lot less because they don't have access to healing potions and Dwarfs are underpowered in multiplayer. So why do you see a problem with having very powerful Lord on the Dwarf side? I mean, well, people will pick only him because he's overpowered. Well, right now people, if they are playing Empire, only picking the general of, of the empire because he's overpowered because of the potions and he was even more overpowered before that so for for several months general of, of the empire was clearly the be the only choice in competitive matches so i really don't see why people would nag so much on this i do welcome him and even though as i don't really fight I don't really play dwarves as much. I would really like to play him and I would really like to play against him and see how a player who actually uses dwarves in in a correct manner would uh, would handle him and, and yeah basically I want to I want to have a challenge when fighting dwarves. So I'm all for and I'm waiting for Grombindal and I thank you for this video. Hope you like it. If you did press like, comment if you will and see my other DLC analysis videos or my Mechanics videos for Total War series 
and also my Let's Plays for Total War series and other games. Thank you for watching and see you later.